Now, we do this with Brian K. Sullivan, who owns a high ground on weather and business for Bloomberg. He has been dedicated for years in following this. What gets my attention of Ian Bryan is 45 miles an hour and suddenly 125, Category 3. Can this gain yeah. ever more momentum to Florida? Yeah, exactly. Intensive rapid, uh, rapid yeah. Intensely rapidifying, and, and it's going across um, the very flat part of Cuba right now, and it's going to hit into the uh, Gulf of Mexico, get some warm water, build up even stronger, and um, I think in the next couple of hours we can see it crack Category 4. One of the things, and Lisa mentioned this on the break here, is every single guest on Bloomberg Surveillance has bought something down in Florida. I mean, they're all on the coast. Yeah. They're all these beautiful condos. Has there been any change over the years to the coastline real estate that is affected by these historic storms? They haven't moved back from the shoreline, have they? No, they haven't. And um, in this case, that part of Florida doesn't always get hit. So there's been a lot of... Um, you know, kind of whistling in the dark and the idea that, oh, it never happened to us before, so it's not going to happen now. I mean, you have to go back probably to 1921 to get a storm of this strength and this power uh, coming into that. Wait, wait, wait. You're serious. We have to go back to Humphrey Bogart and, La and I think it was Lauren Bacall in that hurricane movie? Yeah. Yeah. Key West, right? Or Key, Key West. West. Oh. Are you kidding? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's one big concern that people have as they watch the development of Hurricane Ian, especially hitting some of these areas that have been built up. And Brian, how much would the damage potentially be if they got a hurricane akin to what we saw in 1921, which some people think is the last analog? So if it hits exactly right, um, you're talking 60 to $70 billion worth of damage throughout Tampa Bay. Wow. So at this point, how do people uh, kind of prepare for this? And longer term, what does it mean in terms of development, in terms with uh, recognition of whether this is going to become a more frequent event? Is it? Well, I think at this point, all you can do is get out of the way. I mean, it's, you know, it's too late. But in terms of the long term, um, this is a conversation the entire United States has to have about what we build right along the waterfront and yeah. how much money we put into it. You know, we're seeing this in Boston. We're seeing this in Miami. We're seeing this right. in Fort Worth, Virginia, all over. Right. Brian, Tampa is just one example. A major shout out to Jeffrey Vinnick, ex-Fidelity, who did so much for Tampa along with others. A boom economy. There's going to be a compare and contrast with the heartbreak of San Juan. I mean, there's no question about it. What does Tampa have to do to not have some of the sadnesses that were observed in San Juan in recent weeks? I think in, in some part, the, the uh, infrastructure on the mainland is a little more robust than the infrastructure on Puerto Rico. So, you know, at that point, you're, you're dealing with um, the resources of the entire country and um, you know, they, they should be going to Puerto Rico as well. But the, I, think, I think it's mainly a question of um, infrastructure and, and how quick you can bounce back. So, you know, the grid on the mainland is a little more robust. The um, transportation system on the mainland is a little more robust. And it's just easier to get materials into South Florida than it is to put them on a boat and send them to Puerto Rico. Brian, can you give us a sense of the trajectory for the rest of this season, this hurricane season? Are there other forms of brewing? Do you get the sense that this is going to be an exceptionally active one or just par for the course? Well, the season forecast was for it to be above average, and it was very quiet through August, but now it's kind of picking up speed as we're heading to September here. Um, the other interesting thing is the Western Pacific, uh, Vietnam is going to get hit today by a very strong storm. Japan has been hit by a few uh, very strong storms. So you're seeing that kind of two pockets starting right. to uh, come into focus here. Brian, thank you so much. Brian K. Sullivan with us on a storm that we've underplayed in the Northeast, but which is very serious.